a moderator. It's a very well put together uh, session. And that is Lorraine Osano. She's going to be moderating this session for us. And Lorraine asked me to introduce her as an entrepreneur and life coach. She'll tell you more about that, but that is what she said. That's her, entrepreneur and life coach. And she loves working to develop people to get positive outcome. That's really nice. And that's very broad. So Lorraine, you'll have to explain what that means. Like working to develop people for positive outcomes. So awesome. Welcome, Lorraine. Thank you. So these are some of the outcomes we are looking for. So I'll see how you make it happen. You and Alice make it happen. So thank you, Nace, for that. I'm very grateful. So I want to welcome all of you to this session this evening. We've all noticed that, especially since 2020 started, I don't know if it's because we have a lot of time, but many people are exercising more, running more, you know, and more active generally. So we want to now in this session find out how do we balance nutrition and exercise or running? Then, of course, everybody has advice and about what to do and what not to do. And so we have a professional to help us uh, to get this right. Our panelists today are in the green corner. We start with the, the wishful marathoner, the one who has convened this meeting, and that is Nasarian Kigathi popularly known as Nis. Nis is a running enthusiast. And because of this, she is the founder of Wishful Marathoners. She will tell us if this is real or it's just wishful thinking. And of course, she is a community leader. That's why she has started off a group. In the, green, in the other corner, we have Dr. Alice Ojuang, who is uh, going to give us professional advice on nutrition and all. She has 20 years experience in nutrition and dietetics, and she loves to talk about nutrition. In fact, she took it a step further, and now she has a PhD in the same nutrition and dietetics, and she lectures at the Technical University. So Alice, we're expecting to find out what all this means, feet, forks, and light. I'm sure all of you wondered, what are we talking about? So Alice will tell us what that is about. So I would want to give it back to Nicerian, but before that, of course, we must recognize the guy behind the crew, and that is Kenny Gathuru, who is uh, keeping us all in check. And uh, thank you very much, Kenny. So we are happy. Thanks for the music to get us all started up. So just to note, uh, this session is being recorded, so you can have it on YouTube, on uh, Dr. Ojuang's YouTube channel after this. So just note that, and if you have questions, please, please feel free to use the chat. That's how we get your questions and we shall address this as time permits. So to get us off to the start, wishful marathoners, what's that? Tell us about it, <laughs> Nicerian. All right, um, I think let me start with first, the first wishful marathoner, which is myself. Um, and, and I, I, I got that name because really I feel like I, I will always aspire to run a marathon. I don't know whether one day I will. I hope I will. Um, but that's where it all, it all started. I've uh, been running well this time. And I say this time because I, I tried to start a couple of years ago, but I wasn't very consistent about it. But this time around, I, I think I'm more serious. And that was in November 2019. Um, the reason I started running is just because it's so hard. I find running to be the hardest thing in the world. And I know my dad will just laugh at me, the background there. <laughs> but for me, it's the hardest thing. And um, so I started it because I'm like, I can't have this thing that I'm so scared about and that I find to be so hard um, challenging me like that. And it's just my body, like literally just moving one leg in front of the other cannot be the thing that just um, overwhelms me. So I took it on as a challenge and I also took it on as a, a metaphor for my life, you know, whatever challenges that I face, um, I should be able to just take them on and give it my best shot and um, hope for the best. So that's how it started. And then we kind of found each other. Um, I think there's, I realized that there's so many, so many people like me um, who are, who find running to be a challenge and a passion at the same time. The thing with running is that it's so hard before you start and then you run and it feels so good once you either hit the pace you're targeting or the distance that you're targeting 
so we've kind of just found each other. One person introduced the other and the other, and now we have a small, vibrant group of very passionate um, runners in different stages of their running. Some are beginners like me, others are just, uh, yeah, Akinautero. When they post their runs, you're just left like, okay, yeah, go, yeah, one day. Mm. Um, and everything in between. We have so many different age groups um, in, in the group. It's just a, a cacophony of so many uh, different runners. So that's Wishful Marathoners. Until I run my 42 kilometers, I'm still going to be wishful. And I know the first time I run it, it's going to be awful. So I'm going to want to run again and again. So I think I'll always be a wishful marathoner. And we're many of us. So I'm so grateful to have all of you here. Um, and that's, that's wishful marathoners, Lorraine. Okay, that is nice. Well, I see the wish is becoming a reality. And uh, we wish you the very best, uh, Miss Wishful Marathoner. So as you said, everybody has stuff to say about what to do and what not to do. So we have the professional to help us to demystify some of these things, to help us to see, so how does nutrition relate to it? What is feet, fox, and light? And to do this, we want to give the stage to Dr. Ali Sojuang to please uh, take us through this. So Ali Sojuang, you have our attention. Thank you very much. Good evening, everybody. It's nice to see you and I'm happy to be here because I like to talk about nutrition. But I'm also grateful to Wishful Marathona, who I was introduced to by Stephen Party. And yeah, I am trying to top the charts, you know. I used to run many years ago. I ran like maybe six, seven half marathons and then I took a break for five years and then I started running again um, 2018. So. I'm back and I found a team that uh, is, is happily running. So I'm happy to be there. I'm happy to compete. I'm happy to take the, I'm happy to take the, um, the challenges. And some of us, we always need, I need people to exercise. I can't do it alone. So I'm grateful for the wish, Wishful Marathona for starting a, a group. And I think we are going to grow. So I'm happy to talk about nutrition today. A lot of people, um, all of us eat from the poorest to the richest. From the person in the streets to Bill Gates, all of us eat. But I can tell you, nutritionist or dietitian is the one person you should make your best friend. Because as much as we eat, and most of us eat healthy foods, we know it. But what happens is we just make one or two mistakes that can actually be costly. So I'm just going to share my presentation and I'll talk about uh, Fox. And uh, some somebody already put knives in my title i don't know how but yeah so you met my girls so courtesy of which will marathoner this is why we are here because it is a covid 19 pandemic we cannot we cannot not talk about it so of course we know it is serious times it is pandemic and health we are losing lives and what has this shown us the statistics from um, COVID of, uh, mortalities abroad show us that people who smoke and people who are obese are actually at the same risk. So it means it is very dangerous to be obese because it means you're at a risk of death as a smoker. And then death, death rates for young obese adults is equal to the older adults. So that means that if you're young and you're obese, can you imagine your mortality rate is as high as somebody who is in their 60s and 70s. So, and of course, if you have underlying medical conditions, it's not just diabetes and hypertension. If you're asthmatic and it's not well controlled, if you, have, um, if you get uh, infections all the time, you have a low immune, then it's a problem. So it's, um, this COVID pandemic is really bringing to the forefront how dangerous it is to be unhealthy. And uh, most so, it is very dangerous to be obese and have chronic conditions. So let's see what we can learn from this session to help us. But I'm sure everybody's interested in knowing about their immune system. So what's the immune system? You know, immune system is a network of tissue, organs, and cells that um, protect you from bacteria, fungi, viruses, and um, it is actually affected by your diet, lifestyle, and environment. 
So it's not just diet. A lot of people have been taking ginger and lemon and, you know, taking that every day. But how about your lifestyle? How about your exercise? How about your sleeping habits? How about the environment where you live? So all three play a role. So if you do one and ignore the others, then you're, it's, it's not going to improve your immune system. So your immune system, um, for you to improve your immune system, during this session, after this session, I'll encourage you to analyze your habits. We all know our healthy and unhealthy habits. You know if you don't sleep properly, you know if you don't exercise, you know if you eat unhealthy, we all know. But now we need to pay attention so that we can do something about it and, um, and improve our health because we need it for a while. We have very important work to do and I'm sure you know what that is. So anyway, what's my story for today? It's not about COVID. It's about wise use of fox, feet, and light and darkness. But we will start with the fox. So I'm sure you already know this is about food. So why do we eat? If we go back to primary school or nursery school, it's about why do we eat? Energy, body building, development, repair, and maintenance. You know that, you know you need to eat fruits, you know, to eat, you, know you need to eat vegetables, be, uh, starches, you need fat, you need all the foods. But where do we go wrong? Where we go wrong is really, in my few years of practice, 20 years plus, I have found that most of, most of my patients, and I'm specialized, so mostly I see obese, obese patients, hypertensive, diabetic, people with high cholesterol, and people who, with metabolic syndrome, a mix of all this. And one of the mistakes they make that cost them a lot is eating too little at the wrong time, which is eating too little in the morning and eating too much at night. And it doesn't matter what you do in your life, this is going to affect your health. Too little at the wrong time and too much at the wrong time. When we eat breakfast, we eat nothing for breakfast. And most of the people I've talked to, even some of the wishful marathoners, they'll wake up and eat two slices of bread and a cup of tea and go. That's really nothing. What happens is your brain, your brain needs ready glucose for energy. That means when you eat the food, the food is converted into glucose and your brain uses it. So when you eat two slices of bread and a cup of tea, it's gone in a very short time. And that means your brain, your brain doesn't have enough glucose to work. When you wake up in the morning, you're going to work. That's the time that you're really most productive. So when you don't eat and you eat or eat too little, you don't have enough glucose, and your body ends up using a stress hormone for energy. Look at God. So that makes you extremely tired at the end of the day. Most of the time, people who don't take breakfast will have a headache at the end of the day. Those who have migraines, you will get it at the end of the day, and you're always tired and fatigued. And if once in a while, if you do that, it's okay. But if it's your daily life, breakfast, nothing, have a heavy lunch, dinner. And also, if you eat no breakfast, it also makes you, you, you're likely to be an unhealthy eater because what happens is you're always going to snack. If you take coffee, you'll take so much coffee, you'll take so much sugar in your tea because you know you need sugar. So you're feeling hungry, you'll go and put three, four teaspoons of sugar, take it. Any snack comes by mandazi, whatever you name it, it's gonna go. You're more likely to eat it. So not eating breakfast is dangerous in the long run for your health. And uh, let's talk about children. There's a time I wrote an article in the newspaper about children. So children wake up to go to school early in the morning. Fortunately, now they're resting. So they, go, they wake up early, five o'clock, you're taking your child to school. It's too early, they cannot eat their breakfast. So they go to school without breakfast. And then what is their uh, uh, concentration of productivity? Of course, less than 5%. 10 o'clock comes, you've packed something sweet. So what happens? They will eat, they will drink something sweet. And then they are hyperactive. What's their uh, concentration? Very low. And then lunchtime comes, they eat, and they're drowsy the whole afternoon. So how, how well are they doing? And what, hap what happens? The parents actually move the child from one school to the other with the same kind of diet. So the problem is just not having your breakfast. And that is what happens to adults. Your productivity is low you know that you actually need to work. So when you skip breakfast and eat your heavy lunch, you're drowsy the whole afternoon. So your productivity is actually less than 20%. So you can imagine. Let's talk about dinner. So we come home, we are happy, we've worked hard the whole day. 
uh, the better half has made a nice meal, put it there, and so you have a really large meal. So what happens when you eat something like protein, animal protein, meat, chicken is digested for six to seven hours. Everything we eat becomes sugar. 100% of your carbohydrates become sugar, 60% of your protein becomes sugar. So it means that at night you have a lot of sugar because you've eaten a lot of food. So your brain, remember, needs ready glucose for energy. So you have ready glucose, your brain is active. So are you really going to have sleep? Of course not. You will sleep. Some people say, oh, the minute I finish dinner, I will just fall there. I will just start sleeping on my chair. You can sleep, but you're not well rested. So what happens? You wake up in the morning, you're tired. Or before we go there, the brain, at night, a lot of processes happen. The brain stores new information, it repairs cells, gets rid of toxins, restores energy, releases molecules like hormones and protein, nerve cells communication. In short, the body rejuvenates itself. But when there is digestion going on for long hours, then these processes do not take place effectively. Let's say you eat your dinner at nine o'clock. Popular for Kenyans, news time. You have your large piece of ugali, large piece of meat, large, large portion of vegetable. So count 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, seven hours, you're still digesting. So how much sleeping have you got? So by the time even you get up, your you know, digestion is incomplete. A lot of processes are not complete. So people suffer from acidity, you're so new yesterday in the morning, you can't eat your breakfast. And of course, that's your act. So definitely, the consequences is fatigue and burnout. So imagine you're not taking breakfast, you're tired every day in the evening. You eat a large dinner, you're tired every day in the morning. So all your life in the morning, in the evening, you're tired. So what happens, I've had some clients who they end up going to the hospital to do tests because they feel so tired and fatigued, they feel sick. You go to the hospital, they run tests, they do x-rays, they do everything. You spend like 250,000 or something like that. And then what happens? They say everything is negative. The problem, you actually don't sleep. You don't eat healthy. So, so you're fatigued, your productivity is low. And if you're a runner, how is your endurance? Eh? What is the risk of injuries? If you're all of us who want to maintain a good weight, What's the problem here? Weight management, okay? If you're hypertensive, can we, can we actually control your blood pressure? If you're diabetic, can we control your blood sugar? So this actually affects your health, if you're existing health, and of course it's a risk factor for more serious problems. And it also affects the emotional uh, health of everybody. So you're tired every day in the morning, you're tired, you didn't sleep properly, in the evening you're tired. Tell me, how happy are you? You have children, you go home, you have a spouse. You know, it really affects emotional health and it generally affects uh, the uh, communication and association in the family. So the mistakes we make uh, in our diet are few, but they are very costly. And I'm only taking those two because I know that's like, very, very common. So who makes those, these choices? Of course, it's me and you. So let's go on to the wise use of light and darkness before we go to the pit. But we can see what we do with our forks also affects our sleep. If you eat too much at night, you do not sleep properly. So let's talk about the circadian rhythm. I'm sure you know about it. This is the natural cycle of physical, mental, and behavioral changes that occurs in your body in 24 hours. So it means it's your body's internal clock. It controls day and night. So it's actually your day and night rhythm. So it, is, um, it determines your natural sleeping, feeding, brainwave activity, hormone production, cell regeneration, and other important biological processes. So really your circadian rhythm, in short, to make it simple, most of the, it's just your, it controls your day and night rhythm. So what time do you go to bed? And what time do you go to sleep? So it is important to, to control your circadian rhythm. If you go to bed at nine o'clock every day, you need to make that a habit. So then your body is able to tell you, it's time to go to sleep, it's time to wake up. And other processes like feeding, brainwave activity, hormone production is, is, is uh, let's say, goes on extremely very well. As opposed to you sleep at 10 o'clock today, another day you sleep at midnight, 
And when you do late nights all the time, and also you are in a lit office the whole day, you're working and you have light on, that's, that affects your circadian rhythm. And you find that you, when you go to bed, you take longer to fall asleep. And it just messes everything else. If you take longer to fall asleep, that means you will not be, it is always difficult for you to wake up and other body processes are not good. So the advice here is make good use of your day and night. When it's time to sleep, go to sleep. It's always very important to sleep early. You all know you need to sleep eight hours, not six to eight, not seven to eight. In fact, there's a nice article in an awake. I will find it. It shows that if you sleep seven hours, you still get uh, frequent calls. So you should sleep actually eight hours. So if you've been sleeping six hours, eight, uh, less than that, that's a problem. So some of the things that, uh, some of the consequences of not sleeping properly, I'm sure you may not see this very well, but I'll read it for you. Memory loss or memory issues. You have memory problem, trouble with thinking and concentration. So you are, of course, your productivity when it comes to work, mood changes and swings. You're more prone to accidents when you don't have enough sleep. You have a weakened immunity, no matter what you do. And the one thing I found in this, uh, in this country and many other places I've been is people take a lot of vitamins. Somebody tells you this one is going to help you with your energy level, you start taking it. But remember, if you don't eat, if you eat a large dinner and eat no breakfast, the problem will be the same. So what's vitamin going to do? Well, somebody tell you take ginger and lemon, you're gonna have a better immune. But you don't sleep at night and you don't eat breakfast. So how is it gonna help you? So we have to make these changes. So weakened immune, high blood pressure, risk of diabetes, risk of hypertension, obesity, risk of heart disease, and of course, poor balance. Please note this for all the runners. Poor balance and of course weakened muscles is affected by your sleep and sleep. And when you talk about sleep, there's quality sleep and there's quantity sleep. So yes, we need to have eight hours, which is quantity, but it must be quality. So, and advice is coming thereafter. So I hope you're connecting use of fox and use of day and light. So now let's go to feet. Why is use of feet? I'm sure you know this is running. And this is why we are here, courtesy of wishful marathoners. So this is a, a, a saying that I really like. It's, um, if you can't make time for exercise, be ready to make time for illness. And this was in 1873. And it actually just makes, it just means that we have so much time, we have 24 hours a day, and exercise is something you do for yourself. You don't do it for anybody else. It's for yourself to improve your health. So it's really important that you invest in exercise, time for exercise, whatever exercise that you do. So why do we run? Um, Wishful Maratona put, posted this, and people gave interesting things. Um, boost energy levels, mental health. I still don't know what that means because there's so much about mental health. Weight loss, maintain weight, keep fit, and freedom to eat everything that I want. Sorry, there's a, an error there. Freedom to eat everything I want. I thought that was very interesting, that you want to run so that you can eat what you want when you want it. I think it's a good thing, but it's a very dangerous thing. And we'll talk about that. If you posted that question, please ask why I say that in case I miss it. Yeah? So anyway, when you're doing, when you're running, which is part of fitness, what should you achieve? So we need to achieve cardiovascular health. And actually, you can actually uh, check the level of your cardiovascular, cardiovascular health and run. Muscle strength, muscle endurance, and flexibility. So when we just run, what is it that we are? What is our fitness? Yes, we can have a good cardiovascular fitness, but we need to check, do we have muscle strength? Do we have muscle endurance? Do we have muscle flexibility? This is very important because it actually affects your endurance and affects the level of your um, injuries. And other, other things that affect endurance and injury includes basic fitness routine. There's an important reason why you should warm up. If you don't warm up, you are easily to get muscle tears. You need to cool down. You need to stretch. 
extreme exertion can affect your uh, endurance and uh, you can also get injured because sometimes we run or we do more exercises than we should. There is something called over-exercising and people have gotten heart attacks in the gym, by the way. And also, of course, you work out so much and you don't, you don't have time to rest. Your muscles don't rest. So then definitely that's going to affect your endurance. Structural. Um, this is structural. Sometimes we get injury because we have an even egg, leg length, excessive pronation, covers foot, bow-legged or knock-knee alignment. And um, I'm not sure about if Nairobi Sports actually assess your movement so that they can know this. But when I was living in South Africa, I bought shoes, you know, you buy Essics, you know, these are the best running shoes and I just order it and it comes, I know my size, but I run and that's 2018 when I started running. I run and I'm always, you know, my shins are aching, my heel is aching. And so I had to go to, uh, somebody told me where to go. So I had to go and they checked how I legged. And what they really concentrated on was actually, yeah, like your pronation, you know. So then they actually, I had to run, they fit me several shoes until I found the shoes that actually works. So if you're getting injuries or if you're a runner, these are some of the tests you need to do. There are also other symbols that we can do and I can share that information later. Others are lumbar lordosis, which means a forward curve in the lower spine. Some people have this and they don't know. So when you start running, you start having back ache, a patella alta, knee cap that's higher than usual, high Q angle, knee cap displaced to one side as with knock knees. So you need to check, especially when you keep, when you start running, let's be professional, you need to check these structures. And then you also need to check your muscle strength, muscle endurance, uh, cardiovascular fitness and flexibility and so you can check that every three months when you start now do that and every three months you need to check the fitnesses then you're having a balance in your running and you're not just doing running without checking those when i started running in 2018 i'd not been running for maybe four years so i got an injury and because we had a good sports facility I went for checkup and then they says your your muscle your my knee the muscles that support my knee are weak so I had to go and do cycling so that I don't get injuries. So then you need to also support your running with other exercises, in other words. So some injuries, of course, are clinical, like some of this, um, IQ angle, patella. Some of these are clinical. So you need to see a podiatrist to help you with this. And some, um, maybe some, some physiotherapists who have done sports medicine can also explain some of the things. So is there, how much should you eat when they're running? Is there a difference between running and eating? Is there a special diet for running? Yes, there's a special diet for running. If you're an athletic competitive runner, then yes, there's a special diet. The fluid that you take, the protein, the starch, the fruits, all of that is, um, is calculated accordingly. And I have worked with runners and you won't believe the amount of, of carbohydrates they need to eat is a lot. But it's not carbohydrate in terms of bread, You're sitting down with so much bread. The carbohydrate that's spread out, they, we need to divide it between fruit, a lot of beans in your diet, vegetables, and many other things, but not just literally you're eating a lot of rice or a lot of, 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 of bread. So for wishful mar marathoners, if there's somebody, I think you just need to eat healthy. And there's a way of, 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 um, of calculating how much you should eat. I'm sure you all know about the plate method. I, I showed it, I sent a video that has it. So it's just a plate that is probably this long, your index finger and your thumb. That's the diameter. Half of it is your vegetables, a quarter starch and quarter protein. Men always need more. So what it literally means, when you finish your half of your vegetables, the men can increase their starch. The women, you eat like that, when you start to feel hungry, then you increase your protein. Also the men can increase the protein. So there is a, a sliding scale that we can use to monitor your intake. So it's not just eating too much starch, you always need to have a balance. But there is, when you're just running for fun, for fitness, for weight loss, then yes, we just need to check how are we eating. 
like I'm going to discuss just now. So let's combine all, the, all of them. Wise use of feet, wise use of forks, light and darkness. So think about, think about uh, a super pill. Imagine there was a super pill somewhere you found out. If you take it, you will run as fast as you want. You will sleep well. You will be healthy. If you're diabetic, you're going to control your blood uh, sugar very well. If you have migraines, it will just disappear. So if you had such a pill, what would you do? Just send some messages. Let's give it a minute. What would you do? I know some people will buy the pill and some people will sell the pill, true or false. Hmm? Stock it and sell it. But you know, the best pill actually for your health are just two things, 90%. Three, your diet, your exercise, and sleep. If you sleep appropriately, exercise and eat healthy, you will be fine. So you don't need to buy it. You already have that. You just need to make decisions. So I'd like you to remember this word, freeze. So number one means, F means free of toxins. So what are these toxins? So first thing you need to do, assess yourself. Are you consuming toxins? in your diet, alcohol, sugar, salt, and what are some of the bad habits that you have? So you need to think about those, write them down and do something about them. Hydration, very important. We know in general, you need to take between 1.5 to two liters, depending on how heavy you are or what you do. But if you sit in a lit room the whole day, you need to add another 500 ml. If you run and you sweat a lot, you need to have almost like three liters. But there's something also like taking too much water. So please don't take too much water because if you take too much water, you also lose your water-soluble vitamins. It goes through the sweat, it goes through the urine. So don't overdrink. And when you talk about hydration, it means quality water. Water with lemon is not quality water. Juice is not water. Tea is not water. I'm not talking about fluids here. I'm talking about water. So you need to take quality water, meaning as pure as it comes. Eat healthy. What does eating healthy mean? Don't eat. I'm sure you've heard of this saying, eat like a king for breakfast, a princess for lunch, and a pauper for dinner. It just means that you always need to eat more food in the morning. You're going to work, you need more energy. At night, you're going to sleep, you need less food. So we need to eat less. Always eat a variety of foods. Like, you know, every week, look at what variety of vegetables am I eating. Keep a diary. Because you, a lot of people eat spinach, skumawiki, and cabbage. That is no variety. If you're going to prevent cancers, and if you're going to have a better immune system, the nutrients are in the food. You've heard of this thing, thy food is thy medicine and thy medicine is thy food. So you need to eat a variety of fruits, vegetables and starches and always eat as near natural as possible. If it is very far from nature, stay away from it. Exercise, please make time for exercise, but most of these people in this group exercise. So I'm happy with that. We just need to act a, a, improve our exercise so that we benefit from muscle strength, muscle endurance, flexibility, and all that. Enough rest, meaning you need to sleep at night. So if you're going to sleep at night, train your circadian rhythm. Have a time that you go to bed every day and a time that you wake up every day. And don't take a large meal at night. You should never take animal protein at night. Animal protein is digested for 78 hours. So you should not eat animal protein at night. And for people who are above 55 years and they are, have hypertension, they should not eat any form of protein at night because the amino acids increase what we call glomerular filtration rate. So it means your blood pressure is not, is, when you're resting, it should be lower, but if you eat protein at night, then it's not. So you should remove that from your diet. So, and sugar, don't take sugar at night. Some people say they can rest at night and sleep. There's a day I ran at night at eight o'clock, I went and did three kilometers 
and I couldn't sleep at all. I know it affects me, but that day I decided, let me do this because I had a long day. So if you, if you run and it affects your sleep, please, you should not run in the evening. Make your running earlier in the day. So analyze yourself. That would be um, not good for you if you know you don't sleep and you run. So stress management. If you're stressed, talk about it. Manage your stress, in other words. And enjoy everything you do, eating, running, and everything else, because we are supposed to be happy people. So enjoy it. So I stop there for now before I give you the take home messages. Thank you very much. I hope I managed my time. Yes, you did. Thank you very much. Yeah. Now, this is interesting, and to many of us, it must be a bit surprising. So you're telling us, no, Nyama. No chicken, no fish for dinner. I think something else, a nice comment that came up from Ruth and Shako is we are having breakfast for dinner and dinner for breakfast. Very interesting. So I'm sure there are questions that are coming up, so we'll address them as they come. I think the first question we got was from Ruth Tabu, which Alice will ask you to take us through. Mm -hmm. uh, how about intermittent fasting? It's become very trendy and, you know, something that a lot of us are doing. What's the professional advice? So intermittent fasting, there are many, um, we have 8, 12, 8, 16, meaning you fast, for, you fast for 16 hours and eat for eight hours. So we have what is a normal, which is actually what is a normal diet. So you eat from eight o'clock to six o'clock. That's normal, that's what everybody recommends and that is what is recommended. But what I have seen, People sending me messages, they are fasting longer. So ideally, if you eat within eight hours and fast for 16 hours, that is fine. There's no problem because within those eight hours, you're able to meet your basic nutrients. So you eat your more food in the morning, less in the evening, you'll be able to meet your fruits and vegetables. But when you have shorter hours of fasting and longer hours, sorry, shorter hours of eating and longer hours of fasting, then that becomes very dangerous because there is no way in four hours, for example, you're going to be able to meet your nutrient needs. You see, there's a, there's a reason why you have to take, let's, let me use numbers. So you need 1,500 calories. That 1,500 calories, you, get to, you need to get sufficient energy for your body to use, to function, to work, to think, you have to get sufficient nutrients, vitamins and minerals for repair and maintenance. And you have to get fats and many other things that the body uses. So if you're eating for only four hours, it's not possible for you to eat your 1,500 calories, for example, to meet your basic nutrient requirement for your body to function normally. It means you're going to eat less. And so you're starving longer and you're having less nutrients. If you do that for just one week, the body starts to break itself. The, mass, the body starts to break muscles. So we find that your creatinine levels are high. When you do a kidney function test, we find there's too much protein being broken. In other words, I'm trying to use simple language. And so that's dangerous. And the longer you take to do that, the more your body breaks down. And when your body starts to break down, it means you're sick. And what it means is that your nutrient requirements become higher. So if you're sick, remember whenever you're sick, you need to eat more. So you are fasting for longer, you're eating less food, the body starts to break itself, you're definitely sick. So when you're sick, there's something we call a vicious circle of malnutrition. So you have a condition here. So you need, on a normal day, you need 1500 calories. So when you're sick, you need 2,000. But so you need 2,000 calories, but you're not meeting that nutrient intake. So the body breaks its body, the body breaks itself more. And then you're not meeting that intake, your requirement become higher. The body needs more nutrients, more energy, more fat, but you're not taking it. So then it becomes very dangerous and your immune system goes down and you start to have even, you can even start to have organ failure. So it is very dangerous to intermittent fast for longer. So what I recommend, do your eight, 16. 
that's the one that I recommend as a dietitian. But when you start to eat for six hours and fast for 18 hours and start to eat for four hours and fast for 20, eat for two hours and fast for 22, then you're just slowly killing yourself and you're going to be very weak. And if you get malaria or typhoid or one of those metabolic conditions, you can be in so much trouble. And I have seen that happen to some of my clients. Thank you, Lorraine. Thank you. I think that's a big one and I'm sure you'll get a little more. Feel free to ask. If, they, if we don't address it today, we shall send you the answers. Now, second question comes from James K. Matthew. Where would you get a structural check? A structural check would be good. Would be, I said uh, you can see a podiatrist and I used to know one and then also a physiotherapist who have done sport medicine. There are a few of them in the town and they'll be able to check that. I can find the numbers and make referrals and share the contacts. Uh -huh. So is it better to exercise at night or during the day? The, one of the runners wants to know that. Well, it's always better to exercise first thing in the morning, if you can, or before, before night, before five o'clock, it's best to exercise. Because when you exercise, you know, your heart rate, circulation improves, a lot of good things happen. But what also happens is your feel-good factor endorphins can make you hyper. So you find that you're hyperactive. So when you exercise at night, so you're hyperactive at night, that's not a good time to be half active because you need to sleep. So if you exercise at night, it might interfere with your sleep. And even if you sleep eight hours, you might not get quality sleep. So I do not recommend exercising at night. I personally don't, yeah. Okay, and what would you say about, is, do you have a diet? Would you recommend a diet to increase metabolism? A diet to increase metabolism. Hmm. Let's define yeah. metabolism. Metabolic rate is the speed at which your body uses energy. So either your body uses energy very quickly or your body uses energy very slowly. So if your body uses energy very slowly, it means you're prone to gain weight and uh, weight can be a problem. If your body uses uh, uh, energy very quickly, it means you're always hungry and you eat a lot. So diet alone cannot increase your metabolic rate. You need to have an exercise plan, sleep, and diet. And it's not, we don't talk about diet. I don't recommend diet. Diet is restrictive, meaning that you're either on a high protein diet or you're on a vegetable diet. That's not healthy. That's not sustainable. Remember why we need to eat energy, protective development. You need all your foods. So we talk about a healthy meal plan, not a diet. Yeah. But if you think you have a low metabolic rate, then you need, if, and you don't have an exercise plan, then let's start from there. If you think you have a low metabolic, metabolic rate and you don't sleep eight hours, then you need to start sleeping eight hours. Then we can correct that. Okay, maybe closely related to the sleeping, someone asks, uh, can, you, do, can you sleep in installments? Can I do the eight hours in installments? No, you need to sleep all of it together. In fact, a lot of people like to take naps and I think uh, since COVID I've developed that habit, but it interferes with your sleep at night. So don't take, uh, in sleep installments, if there's anything like that, just sleep eight hours. Just train your circadian rhythm. Remember the circadian rhythm also determines the body processes. So train your circadian rhythm, when to sleep, 10 o'clock, nine o'clock, and when to wake up. That, that's a good habit and you know, you'll be healthy longer than when you don't have a, a sleeping time you sleep anytime, you eat anytime. If you're diabetic, you can't control your blood sugars. If you're sick and you're in treatment, it, you can only get worse. So it's good to train yourself to sleep at a particular time and wake up at a particular time. Okay. Uh, Eddie is being very ambitious and wants to find out if you can at the same time. Sorry, I didn't hear that. I missed something. Is it advisable to fast and run at the same time? Not at all. Because when you fast, it means you're not eating. Where are you going to get the energy to run? So your body needs, you know, when you're exercising, when you, the few minutes, when you start exercising, your body uses glucose. And then when the, 
when you keep running, the body uses free fatty acids. When you stop running, the longer you run, the longer the body uses these free fatty acids. When you stop running, the body starts to use glycogen stores. When the glycogen stores are completed, then the body starts to use fat. So these glycogen stores are stored every day from eating your carbohydrates. So if you don't eat, you're not going to have this energy to run. You're going to be tired and fatigued and exercise will not be a picture of health. You'll be exercising, but you won't be a picture of health. You'll just be tired and looking fatigued. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, somebody wants to know, this is Divine Philip wants to know, is BMI a good calculator to know your ideal weight? BMI is mostly used in um, health promotion. And so if I wanted to know what kind of um, intervention I needed to do, I can use a health BMI, but I don't need to use a, health, uh, a BMI anymore. In fact, you can use your height and your waist circumference. There's what we call the waist, waist height ratio. There are so many other numbers you can use. So it's not ideal, you don't have to use it. And anyway, if you're overweight, then you just need to lose weight. So you just need to know, I increased my weight by eight kilos and I am I'm feeling my knees are paining, I snore at night, my clothes are not fitting. I mean, guys, we know when we are overweight and we know when we are slim. So you, don't, you never need to calculate those things, really. You don't have to. Unless you're doing a research study, then we need numbers. But if you're just monitoring your weight at home, then you don't need it. Okay, a um, big question, and this is coming from the Wishful Marathoner herself. Does running really work for weight loss? Mm -hmm. Very good question. Yes, sweetheart, running does work for weight loss, even walking briskly for one hour. In fact, when I, because I deal with a lot of overweight, overweight uh, patients, let me call them that. As long as your exercise, let's say an exercise that helps you to use, like, utilize fat is an exercise that you're using your major muscles, your arms and legs, and it is continuous for 45 minutes to one hour. So running, jogging, of course, that's part of running, walking briskly for one hour, you will lose weight. But there's a mistake that a lot of people make when it comes to when you're exercising and you're trying to lose weight. I just mentioned that when you start exercising, your body uses glucose. And then when you sustain that activity, your body uses fatty acids. When you stop exercising, it will use glycogen and then starts to use fat. So it means the longer you exercise, the better. But what happens when people finish exercising and then the first thing they do is they go and take juice, something sweet. And I've seen that happening at gyms. They go and they take juice, and so what happens, you have replaced, you have taken so much glucose, the body is not going to use stored glycogen, neither is it going to use fat. So if after exercising, you are taking juices, you're never going to lose weight because you're not using the stored energy. Okay. So now yes, maratona, talking. you can lose weight mm -hmm. by running. Of course, your diet also plays a role. Remember, nights, assess your diet as well. Okay. Thank you. Now that you've talked about juices, would you like to talk a little about that? Um, does it help us, you know, if I just choose to take juice mm -hmm. instead of eating a full meal or, you know, as a way to control my weight, does that help? Not at all. In fact, um, I went for a conference, that was like 2011. And now what they, what, um, Fructose, which is what the sugar you get from food, was classified as the next tobacco, meaning it is very dangerous. So what is recommended actually, you should eat two to three fruits in a day, me and you. If you're an athlete, like uh, those athletes, compet competitive athletes, they can eat up to five fruits a day. And me and you, with all the running I do, three fruits a day is fine. But also you need to eat these fruits whole. And so, of course, there is all the nutrients, there is the fibers, and then your sugar rise is not sharp. But what happens when you, when you juice, when you make fruit, when you make juice out of your fruit, then the blood sugar, sorry, the fructose levels are very high. 
And because you don't have the fiber and other nutrients to stop the rise of glucose, it always shoots your blood sugar. And what we call that is, well, every time it shoots your blood sugar, it increases what we call your insulin response index. So it means every time you take your fruit juice, it shoots your blood sugar, your insulin shoots, your insulin has to, the body has produced so much insulin to deal with that sugar. And when that happens all the time, there's exhaustion and eventually your body cannot meet that need. And so you have a risk of getting diabetes. Then of course, I found that a lot of people also take a lot of juice, take a lot of um, juice. So they will take 10 fruits, blend it, and drink it in form of juice. That is so much fructose. You're definitely not going to lose weight. Your weight is going to go up. You will have a lot of, you will suffer from a lot of acidity because if you have one orange, you can eat an orange. Maybe you can eat two oranges, but you can't eat five or six oranges. But if you make that in a juice, you're definitely going to drink it very easily. So you end up getting a lot, taking in a lot of fructose. So it's not a good habit to take fruits. So this is what I tell all my clients. So if we say eat it whole, it literally means take the fruit the way Jehovah created it and eat it whole like that. There is so much you can get from eating the fruit whole. When you take the fruit and put it in a blender, you destroy so many things. And you get your uh, fructose easily available to you, which is a high risk for diabetes in the long run. So there's nothing like natural juice. You know, they tell you, they sell all these packeted juices, they tell you it's natural, it's 100% juice. The only natural juice is coconut. It's the only one that comes with its juice. As long as the fruit, you put it in the blender, it's no longer natural. So I don't recommend juices. So eat your fruit whole and enjoy the benefits of chewing it and swallowing it and all the nutrients that come with it. Okay, so sticking to much as fruit, so do we, can I have fruits and, uh, you know, for dinner, just fruit, you know, it's a nice weight loss, that's what we've been told. You have to be realistic also, so you'll find that you have fruit for dinner, but then at midnight you're waking up, you're very hungry, yeah? So if you want to save your fruits, if you have a good prep first and balance your lunch, you can get away with fruits. And actually, I have some clients who are blunt not to eat anything at night at all. They will take a cup of water and go to sleep. So yes, you can train yourself. But as long as your nutrients for, you meet all your nutrients for the day, that's fine. Yeah. Okay. And you're only eating the recommended fruits, not a huge bowl of fruits. Eh? Yeah. Uh -huh. So if you mix it with the nut and yogurt and what, you know, like that nice one you get at Java. Can I have that as just breakfast or, you know, dinner? You can have that for dinner. If okay. you have meat in your diet, chicken in your diet, beans in your diet, eat that for breakfast. And eat something light for dinner that's digested for a very short time. Okay. Yeah. So I think we'll take the last question. Is it advisable to eat before or after running? Is what uh, Linda would like to find out. No, you cannot eat because you're going to get your yourself a stitch. There's going to be uh, competition for blood circulation to the stomach for digestion and to the, to the body, to the feet for running. And so that will cause a lot of fatigue. So you should, you should, if you're going to run and you wake up in the morning, you're hungry, you can have a fruit and then run maybe after a few minutes, 15, that's okay. But you can't have a meal and run with that, not at all. And if you eat healthy and you wake up, you can still wake up and go to run because you have your, you met your nutrients for yesterday. So you don't need to take anything. If you always feel like you have to eat something, then eat a fruit and wait a few minutes. But you cannot eat a meal. That's really dangerous. You'll be very tired and exhausted and you will not have a quality run. It will reduce your endurance. And yeah, you can get injury from fatigue. Okay. Thank you. I think we have lots of questions. What we'll do, we'll uh, please, we promise to look at them again and then we'll send you an email on, uh, in response to your questions. 
But uh, as it is, we just have a few minutes to finish up and I think I'd like to give the session to Nis, the Wishful Marathoner. <laughs> I'm brought an okay. able assistant. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> hand over to me. <laughs> um, so, so much. Thank you so much, Alice. I think um, I speak for all when I say that was such a useful uh, talk. It was trying to cram so much into a short uh, period of time. I got a lot out of it and a lot more also in the question because then, you know, people could personalize what they're interested in. But I can see there's so many more questions. So either we'll probably have another talk at another time, or they can reach out to you um, through email or on your YouTube channel. By the way, the talk will be posted on YouTube after this, the recording. So depending on the conversations there, you can also reach out to Alice on that. But Alice, thank you so much. Um, you actually proposed the session yourself, which is so kind. Um, and you know, for us to benefit from all your years of experience and knowledge uh, is a real treat. So thank you very much for the no, session. Yeah, um, I think I also really want to thank Lorraine. Uh, you guided us really well. Uh, we've largely kept to the time span that we had promised everyone. I like how you sort all the questions from people and guided the conversation. Um, thank you very, very much. You also just um, proposed yourself for this job. I don't know if Alice, I'm twisted you into it. I don't know, but <laughs> trouble, trouble. You agreed to do it, and you've done it so gracefully, um, and we're very grateful for that. Kenny, uh, we can't thank you enough. <laughs> All the behind the scenes support that you've done, just to I'm for us. To I didn't. I didn't get to kick Kenny a note. Sorry? Oh, yeah. I, my one job was to kick out the misbehaviors, and there was no one who misbehaved. <laughs> Wishful marathoners are very well behaved, unless we're out running. When we are here just listening, it's all good. But thank you so much, Kenny. Thank you. We had a smooth session, thanks to you. And then finally, but not least, is all of you. I think you'll agree with me with running. When you have people struggling along with you, sharing their you know their fears their issues their joys it just makes it all the more enjoyable so it wouldn't be the same without all of you um what you've brought on the table and how we keep encouraging each other and i think also you being here and wanting to take on more knowledge because run it seems easy running just get out and run okay it's easy enough but as you've seen there's so much more into it um and the more knowledge you have then you can be a safer runner and a more effective runner. So the fact that you're seeking knowledge uh, is great. And I'm very, very impressed by that and very encouraged by that. Um, and then finally, uh, out of duress, I will also thank my <laughs> husband here, Bill, who remained <laughs> to, <laughs> to the list of people to thank. But generally, thank you all so very much. Thanks for coming to the session. OK, thank you. That was good. And thanks for convening this. So Alice. Finally, take us home. What is the takeout message to all of us? Okay, parting shots. Lorraine likes to do this. Like, uh, we never have to end it. We have to have a parting shot. So what's my parting shot? So you know, to lengthen thy lives, lessen thy meals. Guys, don't eat too much. If that plate has got a layer, and arrange your plates, most of the time you find people, you take a plate, you put rice, then you put your, you put meat, and then you put a teaspoon of vegetables. Wrong. Half of your plate should be vegetables, a quarter starch, and a quarter protein. Just don't eat too much food. It's dangerous for you in the long run. The older you are, the less you need to eat. So please remember that. To lengthen thy lives, lessen thy meals. Taking drugs without eating properly is like washing your hands and drying them in the dirt. So if you have migraines, hypertension, diabetes, fatigue, frequent headaches, you're always tired and fatigued. There is something you need to do. It's something to do. Most of the time, number one is something to do with your diet and then the rest and exercise and then the rest, oh, sorry, diet, exercise and sleep. Wise use of feet, 
fogs, and light and darkness. And then the rest can come into play. So please remember that. And last but not least, beans load the gun, but lifestyle pulls the trigger. So most of the time people will say, oh, my family is overweight. Oh, my family is like this. Excuses from here to there. Remember, your genes load the gun, but it's your lifestyle. So what you do with your sleep, with your fork, with your feet is what's going to affect you. Thank you very much. And I was happy to do this for my brothers and sisters and my running friends. And tomorrow, Mutaniona, I have to be number one at least for a few hours. Thank you. <laughs> okay, thank you very much, Alice. Thank you for helping us realize just how important lifestyle is and for the many insights provided. And we thank you, Nays, for organizing and getting us all together. You've been a wonderful audience. Thank you so much. We look forward to another session. And please remember to watch the lifestyle. Until another time, thank you very much. It's good night from the crew. Thank you. Okay, bye.